By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to make eye-catching visual effects for CG advertising. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons for keeping this channel running. If you want to check out all of the amazing perks that we offer, I will have a link in the description below to join. Hello everybody, as you can see, we are going to be working on some more CG advertising. I've been having a lot of fun recently and you guys seem to enjoy these videos. So I thought we uh, would break down a shot like this, a very typical kind of, you know, thing coming out of a billboard and ripping the fabric type of shot. Now, if you do want to work along for free, I will have the footage I, I linked down in the description below. But of course, for my Patreon members, I'll also provide all of the files I'm going to be using in case you do want to work along with us. But anyway, as you can see, this is what we're going to be working on today. Just some fabric ripping. And then, of course, here it is in motion in the actual composite. You can see it's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, say a brand or somebody wants you to recreate this. How would you actually go about it? And so that's what we're going to be learning today. And so if you are a patron, go ahead and download your files and we can go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so here is the scene that we're going to be working with today. Of course, I do already have the camera tracking in. I just released a video on my camera tracking process. So if you are interested in that, I'll link that down below. Uh, but we have this into the scene now. Uh, now we need to go ahead and uh, start adding in some of our objects. Of course, the first thing that I want to go ahead and add in is a mesh plane uh, to be our billboard. We'll go ahead and move this up here, scale this up so it's like roughly around that size. And let's go ahead and put a texture onto that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a shader editor. We're going to add a new New material we'll just call this a billboard like that and then i'm going to go ahead and add in a image texture node we'll place that there and open up our ad so there we go here is our ad we can go ahead and open up the image there and uh, we have that over here now it is a little bit stretched so i'm going to hit s x and just scale that out ever so slightly like that so that is looking good. We do want to make sure that our uh, billboard is placed exactly where we want it, just because uh, from here on out, we're going to go ahead and do some cloth simulation. And it's going to be annoying to actually uh, go ahead and place that after the fact. So that is uh, roughly where I like it and make sure that it's camera tracked uh, perfectly, which it is. So there we go. We have the uh, Pepsi ad into the scene. Let's make sure our color is into the base color up there. Uh, but now we need to go ahead and import in our can object. And I'm going to be using a uh, add-on called the Blender Kit add-on. Uh, now you can go ahead and download that in the description down below. But I want to go ahead and search up for Pepsi. Uh, this is a great free asset library that you can uh, download. So definitely recommend Blender Kit. We're going to go ahead and do free first. And we have this amazing pe uh, Pepsi can uh, by Daniel Lee. So thank you, Daniel. We can go ahead and drag and drop this into the scene down here. And there we go. That is our Pepsi can done super easy, super quick. So there we go. Uh, I'm just going to scale this up and position it basically around where I want the actual can to be uh, for branding. We can actually go into rendered mode as well and just uh, move this around here. So that is looking good. OK, so the next thing I want to go ahead and do is uh, worry about the animation of our can uh, just so we can get that in place uh, because the animation will actually be affecting our cloth simulation. So we do want to make sure we get that in beforehand. So on uh, we'll say 165 is where I want the can to actually settle down. Let's actually move this here. I do want it to to kind of come out of the middle of the uh, ad space over here. So roughly around there, maybe make it a little bit bigger, something like that. So there we go. I'm going to hit K and then L to add a location keyframe. And then at frame, we'll say 150. I want it to actually start the animation. So we'll G and then uh, Y to move that backwards. So it's just uh, right behind the uh, actual billboard. You do want to make sure uh, K and then L again to add an animation keyframe. You do want to make sure uh, it actually comes through the uh, billboard. Very important there. So there we go. We have the animation done now we can actually go ahead and start doing the cloth physics now i'm just going to go ahead and uh, shift d duplicate this and hit m and merge it into a new collection we'll name backup like that the reason i'm doing this is because we're actually going to be using uh the thing later to actually model out some of our room and some other cg so i just want to create a quick little backup of that right there so now we have this here we need to go ahead and start doing some cloth animating to it so we can go to the physics properties, add a cloth modifier. And so as you can see, the cloth just falls down right now. Uh, we only have four vertices. And so of course we do need to add some more. And so this is part of the process where it's kind of lag up your machine a ton, uh, just based on how we have to do the cloth simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, this little real time mode on uh, off up here. So we can go ahead and do that. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and add some more geometry to this plane. I'm going to go ahead and right click subdivide. We'll go ahead and shift R to to duplicate that and we do want a lot of geometry here okay so i'm going to stop here this is a decent amount of uh, geometry we actually have in the billboard uh, and so uh, that is looking good you got to remember the more geometry you have the harder it's actually going to be uh, to actually bake this out and the more uh, time it's going to take so just keep that in mind of how much you actually want to do for your own machine so there we go we have everything here now i do want to make sure that the can comes through this uh, section so it kind of comes in the middle of the wording right here so let's keep that in mind as we go to the next step we'll 
which is going to be to actually create some of the tears in the fabric. And so uh, to do that, we're going to go to edit mode. We can click up here to deselect everything. Now I'm in vertex mode. I do believe that's the best mode to be in, uh, just so it actually cuts everything uh, with vertices. And so I'm going to hit K to enter the knife tool. And you do want to be decently zoomed into this. For whatever reason, I find the more zoomed in you are to this, the less gaps it's actually going to create uh, with the knife tool. So now if we uh, we're just going to click up here and create a cut, and we're just going to do some kind of crazy cuts in the middle here. Again, trying to keep our midpoint to uh, right around where the can comes out. So that looks good. We can right click uh, to make uh, end the cut and we can add another cut. So I'm going to come up here to add some more kind of cuts and stuff. There we go. Right click again. We're going to add another one. So we're just going to click and you can make it straight or curvy. I don't really think it really matters in the end. Uh, and then we're gonna click over here as well and just try to get a midpoint right there so that we have some nice cuts. Now, also, I like to add some kind of cuts out here to add some random deviation, and I, I just think it looks cool. So I'm just gonna add some cuts that don't really connect to anything but should add a little bit of uh, more detail to our kind of final cloth sim. So there we go, we have all of our cuts now. Let's hit enter, and uh, as you can see, all of them are selected. Now, this is very important. You do wanna select all of the gaps of everything, and so this is unfortunately a little bit of a tedious process that we have to do but as you can see if we go over to uh, the edge mode we do have uh, some like gaps in the cutting here uh, and so that's very important we want to try to get those out as much as possible so all we have to do is just shift and select the edges that it didn't find so there you go now we have all of them selected now what we need to do is actually make the cuts uh, itself so in order to do that we're going to go ahead and hit alt and then m to make a split we're going to split the faces and edges by vertices so there you go now we have them all split up and they are ready to be cut and shredded okay so now we have everything set up uh, the final thing that we need to do is go ahead and tell the uh, pin group so if you come down to the cloth settings you'll see the shape uh, section now the pin group is just the section where uh, no physics are actually going to uh, apply it's going to be pinned in place and so for us that's just going to be all of the surrounding uh, edges of our material just so that the banner doesn't like fully fall over and stuff like that so I'm just selecting these by holding alt and then shift uh, to select the edge loops right there so there we go we have the entire uh, kind of uh, section over here is selected. We do need to go ahead and make a new vertex group. So I'm going to hit plus on vertex group and assign that with a weight of one. That is looking good. We can come out of here, go into the physics section, and I'm going to set the pin group to be our group down here. The final uh, kind of thing I like to do is in the collision sections down here, you can of course play around with some of these settings. We do want self collisions to be on so that the fabric actually interacts with itself. Uh, so there we go. We have everything pretty much set up. The final thing I want to do is I want to uh, have the can actually interact with the cloth. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and hit the collision section up here. I didn't change any of the settings for mine, but of course, depending on what look you're wanting to go for, you can of course change the soft body and cloth settings down here but there you go we have pretty much everything set up uh, now all we have to do is just bake it very important before you bake it you do want to turn this real-time mode back on if you don't have it on it'll actually not bake uh, you can see why we had it off it's a uh, very very laggy and a lot of detail and uh, stuff up here don't worry if it looks like this by the way uh, we'll go ahead and cash it out now uh, the simulation start and end we do have to kind of figure out as well uh, let's actually go ahead and turn this off just to demonstrate that uh, but what we're looking for is when the very first frame this bottle is supposed to be reacting with the actual fabric. And so for me, that's like, we'll say uh, 155 because uh, the next frame, it's actually past that. And so 155 is when I want the animation to start for the cloth sim. The reason that is, is because this is how we fake it actually tearing. Uh, unfortunately, Blender doesn't actually have any tearing uh, kind of physics baked into it. So we have to kind of fake it a little bit. So if I come over here, we'll go to the simulation start. We want to de, uh, do that frame, whatever it is for you. Mine is 155, so the exact frame before it interacts. And then we do want to end it at uh, one frame after the end of the simulation. So we'll go ahead and uh, 241 like that. The reason I do one frame is just for motion blur on that final frame. Uh, we'll have a one frame buffer so that it can actually get some of that data. So there you go. Now we have everything set up. We can come back over here. Again, before we bake, we do want to turn this on. And let's go ahead and bake the keyframes. While this finishes baking, I quickly just want to plug that I do have some visual effects courses. If you are interested in learning all about visual effects, I'll have a visual effects beginner course, a full visual effects course where we dive into a super advanced shot inside of Blender, as well as a visual effects advertising course. So I'll have all three of those in the description down below. I greatly appreciate it if you check those out if you do really want to learn visual effects inside of Blender.
Anyways, the bake has finished. We can go ahead and see the moment of truth. Uh, we can see the fabric rips and everything is looking good there. Of course, depending on how it actually looks on your end, uh, you can change it around and everything like that. So there we go. We have the physics kind of baked in. Let's go ahead and start getting out this to uh, do a funnel render and composite. So I'll come over here. We'll see everything is looking good. Of course, we don't have any lighting into the scene now. So we do need to go ahead and come up to the world tab. I'm going to go ahead and add a HRI. So environment texture. We're Gonna go ahead and open up uh, now the HRI I'm using I'll have in the description down below let's open the image it's just a super simple fog HRI so that is looking good uh, and so uh, now what we need to do is some of the other things first of all we don't see any reflections on the actual bottle or anything uh, so that is a big kind of telltale sign that this is CG as well as there is nothing actually in the uh, background of this there's no room or anything like that so I want to go ahead and add those in as well so if you remember before we made a backup so this is where that back backup comes into play let's just uh, go ahead and shift D duplicate this out and so now with this plane I can go into the edit mode we'll hit a and E to extrude that out just to make a little room down here I'll uh, select this first flip face and just go ahead and delete that there we go we now have a little room and just for the sake of simplicity I'm gonna go ahead and uh, delete the material for this one so there we go we have uh, kind of no thing in here as well as if I go ahead and add a new material we can go ahead and delete the printable BSDF just so it's fully black in here uh, just saves a little bit on render time uh, so there we go we can of course see the blackness and everything over here so this is where we need to go ahead and create a holdout so it blocks out all of that stuff behind there so let's go ahead I'm just gonna select uh, the edges up here we can uh, hit E to extrude and then S to scale outwards uh, and then I'm just gonna make this a separate object so it's super easy for us in the uh, you know selection process so if I I hit P uh, go to separate by selection and there we go now we have a brand new object that is separate uh, so we can actually affect that as well uh, the big reason I want to separate this is because now I want this to be uh, the actual footage of our background so that we have some nicer kind of reflections on the can down here so I'll duplicate this uh, material we'll go ahead and do a principled BSDF place that there and then I do want to add in a image texture as well we'll place that there and I want to open up the footage that we're actually using for this script so the footage uh, right here I'm going to place that into the base color the frames is going to be 240 because that is our frame range down here uh, repeat is going to be set to mirror and then we're going to go ahead and auto refresh so it updates to all of the current frames and the final thing we need to do is control T to make it set to the window vector uh, just so it's actually projected from our uh, window point of view so there we go now we're actually getting some decent reflections on the can uh, because uh, we weren't actually having those before and so it looked a little weird on the screen uh, the final thing I want to do let's bump the roughness up and the specular uh, where specular down just so it removes some of the reflections of the actual scene so there we go uh, and then of course we can actually still see this in the render we don't want to see that at all we just want this to interact with the indirect only uh, of the actual CG in our scene so we can go over to the uh, object properties we're going to go down to holdout and there you go uh, basically what holdout does by the way is just anything behind the actual CG uh, that is set to holdout is going to be rendered as transparency and so that is how we actually hide the room and everything behind that uh, so yeah everything is looking good now let's do some final things I noticed we're not getting any reflections from the buildings or anything over here so I can quickly kind of model that out I'm not gonna worry uh, too much about heavy realism uh, just because again these things are just gonna be used for reflection so we'll just make a kind of plane down here I'll go ahead and he hit E to extrude that up just to get this side of the buildings and so let's uh, hit G Y or sorry X to move that down there we go uh, just to give some of the edges of the actual buildings over here we'll go ahead and copy and paste uh, this uh, material so I'm just going to name it footage and so we can go ahead and load footage up on this other object over here so that's looking good I do want to go ahead and make a duplicate of this because instead of uh, using a principal BSDF we're just going to go ahead and plug the uh, color directly into the surface just so we don't have any kind of shadowing or anything down here like that uh, and then of course I do make a separate collection up here so I have a uh, reflections collection up here and I do have it set to indirect only just so we're only seeing the reflections on the can and everything like that 
So that is uh, my explanation there. I might be able to move this back as well a little bit more just to uh, fill out some more reflections on our actual can. Just helps out the realism uh, ever so slightly. So there you go. We have everything pretty much set up now. We can go ahead and start uh, doing this to some render passes to get this out and rendered. So let's go ahead and come to solid view. I'll go uh, over here. We can set up all of our render settings. Uh, now for this scene, I'm just going to do one single pass. We're just going to do a one uh, beauty pass for this. Make it super simple, super, super simple. So of course, put it in the output section down here. I went ahead and just render it as PNG since I wanted this to be uh, super fast and easy. So you can of course do PNG, EXR, anything like that. So of course, when you have all of that set up, you can go ahead and render the animation. Let's just render a quick image to make sure everything is looking good on our end. Uh, so let that load a little bit. And here we go. Here is the result. So again, you just want to set this up to uh, render as an animation and uh, you should get a pretty cool result. Let's actually quickly go ahead and show you what I did for compositing just so that you can do it on your own scene if you do want to finish out this shot. Okay, so here is my compositing. Uh, I'm just going to go over this really quickly just because uh, you can apply this to any compositing software. It's super simple. So all we're doing is we're just merging uh, the two CG and the footage over top of each other. Uh, we can see that I'm just doing some basic color correcting, and so uh, those are just some grade and color nodes right there. Uh, and then the only other thing that I'm really doing is just adding a little mass for it when it goes uh, behind this green building. This green building I used is kind of like a cutoff point. So that's what this reto node is over here. You can see it's just rotoing out the edge of that building so that we don't actually see the uh, billboard. So, of course, uh, depending on if you're doing this in After Effects, uh, DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that, you're going to have to translate some of those things. But honestly, the composite is so easy. I didn't want to really walk you through that. I just want to show you it's literally color correcting and then adding a mask. And so that's pretty much all I did for the compositing. Well, let's go ahead and see the final result. OK, so here is our final result. I'm super happy with how this turned out, uh, especially with uh, the physics and everything kind of, you know, snapping back and, uh, you you know, I've done this many different times now and every single time it feels like I get a new kind of simulation and stuff like that. Uh, but I think it's a super cool effect. Uh, you see it a lot in CG advertising. And so hopefully you guys learned a thing or two that you can apply to your own shots. Of course, I would love to see your own shots. And so if you do want to uh, join our amazing community, I'll have a link to our Discord channel where I'd love to chat with you guys and see what you actually make uh, with this, this tutorial. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.